out of the south that could gust up to 25 miles per hour at times. Tonight we'll have increasing clouds with temperatures in the 50s cooling down to 49 degrees. Tomorrow will be mostly cloudy with highs in the mid-70s and a slight chance for scattered shower across our area. I'm WOWT6 Weather Authority meteorologist Peter Sherwood on News Radio 1110 KFAB. Schrock Innovations presents Nebraska's number one independent computer repair company with offices in Omaha and Lincoln. This is Compute This. Good morning, folks, and welcome in to Compute This. My name is Thor Schrock. I'm the owner of the Schrock Innovations Computer Company with service centers in Lincoln, Omaha, and Papillion. 402-558-1110, 800-543-1110. Those are the numbers to join us on the show today. Of course, if you could ask a question or make a comment, uh, give us a call here on the program. You can also email the show, Thor, T-H-O-R, at SchrockInnovations.com. We'll get you in the drawing for a $25 Schrock Innovations gift certificate that you can use in the service centers for anything you want. So if you're looking for a new computer, if you're looking for a repair job, if uh, perhaps you need this little bit of maintenance, speed things up, maybe you want to upgrade that computer. You know, we've been talking about the ultimate upgrade and how awesome the, the new computers are. And it, it, what's amazing about it is the computers themselves without the solid state hard drive would just be average computers. But with the solid state hard drive upgrade, even an average computer can become a high performance machine. Now, a lot of us at home right now have what we might consider average computers, right? Guess what happens to your average computer when we upgrade it to have a solid state hard drive? That's right. We can actually take out the old slow hard drive in your own computer and put in a solid state. So, you know, the ultimate upgrade is nice because you can take, especially like a Vista computer. I had a customer in the Omaha Service Center, and yeah, I know you're listening right now, that, uh, that came in with a laptop, an HP laptop. And they put like $350 into it, and I was going over the, the work order with them after the, uh, the end there of, the, of everything, basically going through and saying, okay, this is what we did, this is what we, you know, everything, blah, 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 blah. And then I looked down, and I saw there was two viruses they, they paid to have removed from the computer, but they didn't buy endpoint. They didn't buy antivirus software. This sets off red flags in my head because if you're a customer and you pay us to remove a virus – you got the virus because your security solution isn't isn't working. <laughs> it's not doing anything. So if I send you out the door after removing the viruses with no security solution, guess what's going to happen within the first 30 days when you get home? You're going to get reinfected. You're going to get reinfected all over again. It's going to be, oh, my gosh, those people at Schrock didn't do their job. Maybe they didn't remove the virus in the first place and they just charged me. And, you know, honestly, we, we don't do that. I, I, there, was a, there was a fake review that was posted online, and I love this. Somebody said, because first of all, you can't review someone else's experience. It's like against the review policy, but Google posts the review anyway. He said that his grandmother brought a computer into us years ago, and we put a virus on it. I mean, come on. Yes, there are conspiracy theorists that think that the antivirus companies make the viruses. But my goodness, how long would you last as a, as a computer repair company actually installing viruses on people's computers after they left the service center? If I was going to install viruses on your computers and charge you to remove them, wouldn't I do that before? You know? <laughs> so basically, you know, I don't want to have a scenario where a customer gets home and, says, and there's a doubt, even, even an inkling in their mind that maybe, that maybe those guys at Schrock didn't do their job and they just charged me. We don't want that to happen. So I'm at the front counter and I'm saying, did anyone talk to you about semantic endpoint? Because if you go home without antivirus software, you're just going to get reinfected. You may as well not have paid us to remove the viruses at all. They said, well, you know, Kyle mentioned it, that there, for some reason they couldn't do it on this computer. And that really set off warning bells because, you know, endpoint pretty much runs on anything, uh, even Mac. So I'm like, uh, okay, this is bad. And uh, I opened the lid of the computer, like, what's going on with this thing that it couldn't run endpoint, right? I opened the lid, and right there on the, on the keyboard is that Windows Vista sticker. And I'm, then all of a sudden I'm like, oh, snap. This is bad. So they're, they're paying $350 to have us work on a Vista computer that was pretty much obsolete on the 11th of this month because it's never going to get another update from Microsoft again? Oh, boy. Please, Lord. Please, little baby Jesus. Please 
have let Kyle see this and tell the customer that their computer is pretty much not worth $350 before they decided to do this. Because we have customers that will make decisions to do things. We had a customer fix a Windows XP computer last week as well in the Omaha Service Center, and we're like, what the snap is this? Or why would you have us do that? Well, it was for a guy. I was an older gentleman, a really older gentleman, who was in a nursing home, and the family didn't feel like he could learn another operating system. And they honestly they said, you know, he's, you know, he's not really on the Internet and it all. You know, just, just get his XP working so he can play solitaire. Totally get it. Okay, cool. Get it up and running for him. So I'm like telling the customer, and I start off gentle, right? Did Kyle tell you that Windows Vista was obsolete and it, last update was on the 11th? Yeah, he said something about that. Now, see, here's the difference between my guys and me. I hire really, really, really nice guys to work in my shops. You have to find people at Schrock. I have to find people who care about customers. Who, and you can't care about customers if you don't care about people to begin with. If you're, if you're a narcissist, you can't work at Schrock. It doesn't work. You know, I want guys who are confident in their abilities, but, and I want guys who are proud of what they accomplish, but you've got to have people who care about people. And so uh, these guys are really, really gentle. On the other hand, I have found at some points when you're trying to express something that is very important, it can be beneficial to be just a little bit more blunt, just a little. So <clears throat> this is my impersonation of Kyle telling you your computer is absolutely worthless. Yeah, we have this thing called the ultimate upgrade going on right now, and it might be something you want to look into for your computer. Um, you know, you have Windows Vista on here, and that that's kind of going away. And so, uh, in fact, the last update was on the 11th, and they're not going to do anymore. So it's going to kind of it's going to it's going to be a problem on the internet. Are you sure you don't want to look at maybe possibly moving to a new computer rather than fixing this one? Okay. See, very polite, very diplomatic. Your computer is not a piece of garbage. You know, your computer, your computer isn't something that the homeless guy on the corner of 72nd and Dodge would turn his nose up at if you handed it out the window to him. You know, anything, anything helps, his sign said, but not your, not your Vista computer. He doesn't want that. You know, here's Thor. <clears throat> at, at, this is what I did at the front counter. You know that your computer is absolutely worthless, right? Like, your computer is dead. As of the 11th, it is a walking virus magnet. You're going to get infected over and over and over. You are going to be violated in some of the worst possible digital ways that you couldn't imagine. Oh, it's going to be terrible. And you're just going to have to take it because you can't get antivirus. Oh, yeah. You're going to wake up in the morning. You're going to put it on the Internet. You're going to try to do your online banking. Eh. Oh, your money's all gone because you got hit. All right. So you really need a new computer. <laughs> it, maybe it wasn't quite that blunt. Yeah, this may be exaggerated for radio. But you know, it was similar to that. You know, it was, it was like, I want you to understand how bad this is. Now, here's the thing. I'm going over the invoice, and I'm like, okay, you got a preventative maintenance checkup. Obviously, you probably wouldn't have done a preventative maintenance checkup on a computer that you're going to be tossing in the garbage can. Okay? You got semantic, uh, or you got uh, secure updater. You couldn't get endpoint, but you could get secure updater. So you got secure updater on there to keep your third-party software up to date. Um, but that's good. We can move Secure Updater to the new computer, so that was not wasted money. You had the viruses removed, which was good because you probably, if you get a new computer, you're going to want to do a data transfer. So we got to remove the viruses before we can do the data transfer. So that's good. We don't want to move viruses to your new computer. So the money that you spent, aside from the maintenance checkup, uh, was money that you that you were going to spend anyway. So I'll tell you what. If you decide you want to do the Ultimate Upgrade or any other computer, for that matter, in the next 30 days... Um, you know, we'll give you a month to think about it. If you decide, hey, because they're going to get reinfected this next week, they're just going to get hit again, and they're going to come back in, and they're going to say, you know, Thor, I thought about it, and I think it's time that we move to that the ultimate upgrade or some other new computer. Um, and I told them we'd go ahead and give them the the eighty nine ninety nine credited back for the maintenance checkup as long as it was within thirty days, because I don't like charging people for things that they're not going to use. And uh, they're not going to use the, the preventative maintenance checkup on a computer that the homeless guy on 72nd and Dodge. Does anyone really believe those guys are homeless? I mean, it was raining the other day and the homeless guy out there had like an umbrella. And I'm like, you know, I, I don't know why that struck me. Like, I'm sure homeless people could have umbrellas. You know, it, it doesn't. But I mean, if you can't eat, I'm not 
I'm not dropping 15 bucks on an umbrella because I'm, it's raining out. And that tells you how much money they make too. If he, you know, let's say he's got like a four hour shift because they found they, they, these people are actually an organized group of, of, uh, I don't know. What do they call them? You know, panhandlers. Um, and they, they get dropped off by a van and they all four go on the corner. They have an assigned corner and then the van drives away. And then four hours later, they get picked up by another van and four new people are dropped off. Um, so it, it's actually an organized like thing. Uh, but anyway, yeah, this, this report brought to you by, so, uh, so anyway, back to computers. If, uh, if you've got an old, tired, worn out piece of garbage computer, you could bring it into Schrock and we will work on it if you really want us to. And we'll, we'll, we'll be up front either in Kyle's nice way or in Thor's really blunt way that, you know, you could spend your money on better things like that. What is the deal with, there's a new drink at Starbucks, like the unicorn Frappuccino thing. And it's got like rainbow colors in it and a unicorn. And people are like, it's got 455 or 755 or some ridiculous number of calories in it. And there's like memes going around on the internet. This drink is equivalent to three Snickers bars. These people obviously have never eaten a Snickers bar in your life. Because if you're at the gas station or the grocery store and you're in the checkout lane and you can spend $1.19, which when did candy bars go up to $1.19 on a Snickers bar, a little Snickers bar. You're going to get the share, the share size, you know, one for each side of my mouth, the share size for 50 cents more. Then it's not three. It's just one, you know, and it's completely reasonable then. Um, but, oh, man, why we let people drink what they want to drink? All right. Speaking of letting people do stuff, 402-558-1110, 800-543-1110. Those are numbers you can call into the program. Ask a question, make a comment. We'll get you in the drawing for the $25 Schrock Innovations gift certificate, which you could apply toward an ultimate upgrade or, as we discussed a solid state upgrade because the ultimate upgrades come with solid state hard drives. It makes the computers so much faster. Um, we're talking a two to four second boot time, or excuse me, a four. I don't want to lie. The holiday special was two to four. The ultimate upgrade is, is, is a four to six second boot time. It's not as fast as the holiday special, but that solid state hard drive doesn't discriminate. It's the same technology we used in the holiday special. And uh, if you go to Best Buy or the Mart or someplace like that, and you look at computers and you walk up to the little sales guy and you say, Show me computers that are 15-inch screens that have a solid-state hard drive. I don't care about any of the other specs. Your entry price is going to be about 800 bucks, but during the Ultimate Upgrade sale, you can start at the 450 $450 to get into a computer with a solid-state hard drive. It's unbelievable. Now, here's the thing. Last week, I told you I wasn't sure how many more we could get. It's not a salesy thing. It's honestly, we're trying to get the solid state hard drives at a discounted price so we can afford to sell them at $450. Um, you do the math. Go on Amazon. Take a look at what a solid state hard drive costs. You can figure it out pretty quick. We did get 25 additional ones last week. Um, I know we have sold those down to uh, 10, 12, somewhere like that left. I didn't do an actual count since Friday. We have sold some yesterday. So uh, we've got 10 or 12 of these left. I don't expect it to go through the week. I don't think we're going to have enough to get to next weekend. If we do, it'll just be pretty much display models left by the weekend. Um, so if this is something that you're thinking about doing for the ultimate upgrade, I would encourage you to try to do it today. We are open from noon to five, uh, all three locations, Lincoln, Omaha, Papillion. Also, uh, on our website at schrockinnovations.com, you can actually order them online. You can order them right from the website, configure it just like you were in the store. Um, also, it's kind of handy if you want to know if we still have any. They will say out of stock on the website when they're out of stock. Uh, so you click on shopping, click on specials, and if it says out of stock, well then, game over. Uh, and if it doesn't, that means we still have at least one. And so we'll go ahead and get you set up, all right? 402-558-1110, 800-543-1110. Bonnie, you're the first caller of the program today. How can I help you on Compute This? Uh, yes. Hello? I'm here with you. What okay. can I do for you today? Okay. I'm more interested in the Allen Band now than I was when you first mentioned it. Uh oh. And I've been undergoing chemo. I'm on the men now. But Congratulations. I haven't. I, have I had my last one Monday. But I haven't been able to keep up as like I'd like to. Yeah. And sometimes on Facebook, it doesn't, your show doesn't come through right. Yeah, you know, hopefully it's coming through okay this morning, though. Is it coming through okay? Well, I'm not on Facebook now. I'm on the, on the radio. Oh, okay. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. We all we appreciate it, however you're joining us. Okay. Um, so, because, yeah, I did double-check all the audio. So I got here three minutes early because five minutes is too much. 
uh, this morning to check all the audio to make sure that everything is okay with the audio on the on the show. So we should be good. Okay. And if we're not for some reason, no, I don't have any comments right now on the show. So no one has commented and said, oh, Thor, your audio is terrible. Oh, gosh, you know, duh, I can't hear it. It's looping over itself. Uh-huh. So everything should be okay. okay. Uh, but anyway, as far as the Allen Band goes, the Allen Band is still under development. Um, and it's, it's not going to be ready in the next few months. It, it, we're hoping for maybe Christmas. Um, the problem that we ran into was we, uh, we had to start completely over from scratch. Oh, my. Um, because we, the FCC approval to, to create a cellular device is insane. Huh. And so we had to pull the cellular radio, um, which did change the calculus for some people. Some people really liked the fact that it was a completely self-contained cellular device that was mobile. Um, so you didn't have to carry a, a phone, like a smartphone, to have uh-huh. it Bluetooth connected to. You could just wear the device, and it would connect to the Internet on its own or send text messages on its own to, to update everything. Uh, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to do that. We're going to have to go with a device that's paired with a smartphone. It uh, doesn't mean you ever have to use the smartphone. You just have to have the, the, the smartphone with you to allow the Allen Band to connect, or at least within 150 feet of where you're at in, in the house or something, uh, to allow the, the, the Allen Band to connect. Uh, we've been doing some testing with different uh, Bluetooth chipsets for range. We've got one that will go through a, a two-story house, which is really important when you think about it. A lot of seniors do downgrade their homes. But some of them can't afford to. And so you have seniors that do are doing stairs. They are upstairs or downstairs or in the basement or on the main level. And um, you know, having that, that monitoring ability if they fall down or get hurt is really important. So we're working really hard trying to get this thing ready to rock and roll. Um, it's, it, it's, we had to start completely over. And so it, it literally wiped out a year and a half of, of R&D. Uh, and then the difference in the communication changed everything on the software side. So we had to go back to the drawing board on the software side and redesign the apps and redesign all of the, the server-side reporting. Um, so we're working through that right now. Alfonso is a big part of that over at Schrock Interactive, taking care of the server side of things. Uh, we're hoping for Christmas. Uh, we're, we're, we're really hoping, but it's, it's honestly going to be a push. I've got a question. Now, so I'm going to need a, fart, a smartphone to use this? Uh, I'm sorry. You're going to need a what, Bonnie? A smartphone? <laughs> <laughs> um, basically, there's a couple ways this can work. Um, the for, for mobile tracking. So in other words, if you want it to monitor you when you're not at home, you will need a smartphone or something with a Bluetooth connection. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of the more advanced flip phones, basically they're smartphones in a flip phone body so people don't get freaked out. Um, but they have Bluetooth. As long as the phone has Bluetooth, you'll be okay. On the other hand, uh, one of the things I want it to do is I, I do want it to work on a home Wi-Fi as well. So if you have Wi-Fi in your house, the device will connect to the Wi-Fi in the home and monitor that way. So that way you don't have to have the smartphone. You can just have Wi-Fi. But if you leave your house, your Wi-Fi obviously doesn't go with you. I don't have Wi-Fi or a smartphone, but I think I've got Bluetooth on my regular phone gotcha so the 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 problem we ran into and thank you for the call bonnie i appreciate it i swear she said she needed a fart phone i <laughs> swear you said my, that my bonnie. mouth is dry my <laughs> mouth is dry <laughs> <laughs> i'm just giving you a hard time <laughs> bonnie come on now think that's what you got to have fun in life you know bonnie um so no honestly the, the thing we ran up against is and thank you very much for the call as well when we uh, when we did the uh uh, the, the mobile testing when we wanted to do that what, what ended up happening is you need to get a carrier um, for the if you're going to make a cellular device you have to have a carrier to take that for you and the carriers won't put service on a non FCC cleared device and because you know we, we did think that we're like well you know the FCC we're just a little old shrock you know no one's going to come looking for us you know Trump's not going to come after me uh, maybe we should just make this anyway China's happy to make it they don't I don't care they don't care about FCC um, we thought about it, but uh, unfortunately, you can't get service on the device. At least you, you could, but you can't get service at a discounted price. So if you're going to spend 30 bucks a month to have the Allen Band monitored, that kind of defeats the purpose of the Allen Band, right? It was supposed to be free monitoring uh, for life. That was the whole point. Um, so we're working on it, Bonnie. We're doing everything we can to keep it going uh, and to get it done because, trust me, I want to I wanna move this off my, my active project agenda. It's been on there for far too long and put it on the completed agenda, uh, but, uh, but we're working on that. So thanks for the call. 402-558-1110, 800-543-1110. Linda, you're next up on the phone. How can I help you on Compute This today? Um, well, I have a question. I was having some problems with my computer, and um, I called into the Papillion um, Service Center mm-hmm. on, I believe, Wednesday, and um, I'm not sure which was the guy I talked to, but he said something about 
secure updater wasn't working. Is that working again now? Or oh yeah, and the uh, we did a um, there was a weird issue with our server for some reason slowing down. It was responding really, really slowly. And so what was happening is when your secure updater checks for updates, it only it has like a 10-second timeout. So if it goes to hit the internet and it can't reach the server, it'll pop back and tell you there was no internet connection or it couldn't reach the server. And so for some reason, our server was taking like 13 seconds to respond, which is really unusual. For the you know, we, we have some pretty high-end stuff. Um, so Alfonso and the Shrock Interactive team rebooted the server and did a bunch of stuff, and they got it resolved. So there was about a, an eight-hour window of, of maintenance downtime. Uh, but what happened is actually the, the last Windows update for some customers, and we're trying to figure out what the rhyme or reason on this is, but for some customers, the last Windows update wiped out your saved uh, credentials. So when you logged into Secure Update the first time, maybe you had us do it in the service center or maybe you did it yourself. The first time you logged in, it uh, you, you typed in your username, which is your email, and then your password, which is usually like if we do it, we usually use your cell phone number with no dashes or parentheses or anything. Or if you did, if you did it, you assigned a password. There's a little I forgot my password link you can click on to reset your password as well. Um, but basically, it lost those credentials. You entered them the first time, and then it remembers them. You never have to type them in again. So uh, one of the things, uh, the PSA for Secure Updater, I did this on yesterday's show as well. Look in the lower right-hand corner of your screen where your little icons are by your clock. You should see the Secure Updater symbol there. It's a circle with the letter U in it. You might have to click on the little carrot symbol down there. It doesn't look like a carrot for real. Don't like the Bugs Bunny carrot. It's like an up arrow. So you click on the carrot symbol, and you should see Secure Updater if you don't see it in your in your area there. Now, if you're not if you don't have Secure Updater, you obviously won't see it, but you should have it in there. So once you click there and look at it, if it is green, everything is working fine. If it's red, that means there's an update that needs to be installed. If it's black, that means for whatever reason it wasn't able to connect with the server on its last attempt. Now, it being black is not always like an end-of-the-world kind of deal. For example, I have a laptop. When I'm done using my laptop, I shut the lid. I shut the lid. It goes into sleep mode. Eight yeah. hours go by. Secure updater says, hey, last eight-hour window. I couldn't connect to the Internet. That's because my lid was shut. My computer was off. Oops. So it, it's okay for it to be black sometimes. And eventually it'll come out of that. It'll do its next check and then it'll go green. But if yours is black for an extended period of time, like a 24-hour period, you can right-click on the icon and then you can say check for updates and it'll, it'll kind of just force it to do it. On the other hand, if you right-click on that icon and it says login or exit, that means it's lost your login information and you need to log in again for it to work. Um, so basically our, what our plan here is, is our plan is <laughs> we're going we're gonna to do PSA announcements on the radio to tell people to look at their icons. And, and see how many people we can get to self-correct. Um, and then, you know, some, sometimes time will just fix it. You reboot your computer and, it, and it's good to go. Rebooting solves almost every problem with Secure Updater. And then we're going to check the server and see how many people who have active licenses haven't logged in in the last 48 hours. And then we're going to send them emails saying, hey, you might want to make sure you're logged into Secure Updater. Your username is your email address and your password is this. Um, so that way you can log into your secure updater and get it going again. But if you, if you do need to log in and you don't know your password, you can always call us in the service centers, any of the three shops, we can help you out, get that password recovered. Otherwise there's an, I forgot my password link. And the password that you use on the website at secureupdater.com is the same password that you use in your software. Okay. All right. So give it a whirl, Linda. And if you have any trouble, problems, questions, something, if you just don't feel like doing it, you're a subscriber, and subscribers get service at no charge. So if we need to do a Schrock desk, we'll do it. We'll, we'll get your secure updater up and running for you because you want those updates. As we talked about last week, there are a ton of updates coming out. There was more updates on Friday that, you, you know, Adam was like, oh, again? You know, <laughs> and he went through and did all the updates again. for the. He's done them three times this week, you know, for the same programs. And he's like, really? Like, I'm used to that with Dropbox, but, you know, Java? Really? And so he went through and did it all again. But iTunes is the bear. He hates doing iTunes. Um, but uh, but we do it because, you know, we got to make sure that stuff stays updated. Okay. Okay. Now, would that affect uh, my computer if when I was trying to get into my email, I couldn't open up my email? Would nope. That... We, we wouldn't do anything with your email program unless, you know, here's the thing. Secure Updater updates outdated software. So the only email program that Secure Updater supports is Thunderbird. Do you use Thunderbird, Linda? <laughs> No. Okay. So the only one that it supports is Thunderbird, but the worst case scenario thing that would happen is your computer wouldn't you wouldn't have the latest version of Thunderbird. It would still work with the older version. It just wouldn't have the most recent patched version. Um, so if you can't connect to your email and your secure updater is not working, 
What that then tells me, Linda, is there are two indicators that you're having internet connectivity problems. Because email comes in through the internet and updates for Secure Updater come in through the internet. So if those two internet-based things stop working at the same time, the, the, the true test is, you know, are you listening on Facebook right now, Linda? I mean, no, I'm not. Okay. By the way, you can listen to online at Facebook. Everybody else, facebook.com slash Schrock Innovations. We'll also post video of the show on Facebook later on. So make sure if you're visiting facebook.com slash Schrock Innovations, click the like button there. That way when you have to get out of your car to go into church or whatever and you, you're going to miss like, oh, you know, did, did anybody hear about the cyber attack this week on the power grid? Oh, yeah. Three cities go down simultaneously. I'm just saying. There was a fire in the substation in San Francisco. Was the fire caused by the cyber attack, or did the fire cause the power outage? Hmm. Was the, was the cyber attack the cause of the fire that caused the power outage? These are the kind of things we're going to discuss on the program today. And if you're going to miss that because you're going into church, I totally get it. I'm not more important than God. I am not that narcissistic. But you can always watch the show later on Facebook. So, uh, But, Linda, yeah, if, if you can get on the Internet, can you get a web page to pull up? Um, it's very, very slow. Okay, and I think something might be going on with your internet connection. Are you wireless or are you hooked up with a wire? A wireless. Okay, um, laptop or desktop? Laptop. Okay, gotcha. When's the last time you did a complete restart? Um, I shut it down and I started it again, and it it just seems like it's not working right. I don't know. What's... How how far are you from the wireless router? Uh, right next to it. Okay, that's a problem. <laughs> what brand is your wireless router? Um, I'm, I feel like I'm um, Gestapo here. Like, tell me, tell me, I had the bright light. What brand is your router? I, I, I got it through Verizon. I don't okay, know. Okay, got it. Okay. Oh, it's a, it's a hotspot. It's a Verizon hotspot. Yeah. Okay. Right. right. You, we are at the 23rd of the month. Um, my understanding is you probably have a Verizon Unlimited data plan. Would that be correct? That, that's right. Okay. Here is the wild, wild secret about unlimited data plans. It doesn't matter if you're on Verizon doesn't matter if you're on Sprint. doesn't matter. They give you a certain amount of data. And then after you reach your data cap for the month, <laughs> they throttle you. So you yeah. have unlimited connectivity, but they slow it way down. Like down to 3G or 2 Sprint now is slowing it down to 2G speed, which is almost enough to receive a, a text-based email. You aren't going to be streaming Netflix on 2G speed. Let me just put it that way. Um, so double check with Verizon. Make sure you haven't hit your data cap. Well, you don't have a data cap because you have unlimited blah, 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 blah. But everybody knows that they throttle it after a certain cap. Make right. sure that you haven't, you're not getting throttled because if you're getting throttled, that's going to screw everything up. When Secure Updater checks for the latest updates, it's going to take too long for it to check, so it's going to time out. With your email, your email is going to try to retrieve your email. If one, one of your, you know, Lovely friends. We love friends who send us forwards and with, with pictures and memes attached to them that we really didn't need to see that day. And most of them don't even get looked at because everybody thinks that they saw something funny and they have to forward it to everybody they know. What ends up happening is every one of those that you download takes your data up. So if you have one of those in your, in your inbox trying to come through and it's trying to download it at 2G speed, um, what's going to end up happening is it's going to time out and you're not going to get your email, any of the other ones behind it either. Um, so that would be the first thing I would check in this case, especially if, if, you, uh, if your problem magically goes away in about seven days. Okay. Because, see, I, I went, they told me it was my hotspot, so I went and bought a new hotspot. And then, of course, I had the unlimited data. And you're correct. They, it goes, once you get to 10G, then it goes down to um, 3G. Yep. Because I 4G. And... But it seems like I'm, I'm just not getting, being able to open my emails. And I thought, what the heck is the deal? Well, you know, and here's the other thing, too. This is something that, that we're happy to do it for you, Linda. If you pop into one of the three service centers, real quick, while you just come in, we won't even check you in. Because, you know, if we don't check you in, we can't bill you, right? Um, so we won't even check it in. But we'll just get you on the Wi-Fi in the shop. Um, and if you can get on the Wi-Fi in our service center with your laptop and your email just starts popping and secure updaters going ding, downloading stuff, then we know that it's a speed issue, and it's not nothing to do with the computer. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So yeah, pop into one of the service centers when you have time. You know, you if you've ever been in, have you ever been in before for a repair, Linda? Yes. Which service center do you like to go to? Papillion. Papillion. Just roll up to the front door of Papillion. Open up your laptop. You don't even have to come in and talk to the guys. 
your computer's just going to pop right on the network. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, yeah, that's great. We're going to have people gathered outside like in front of our store like it's McDonald's getting on the Wi-Fi. Thank you for the call, Linda. I appreciate you joining us on the program this morning. All right, 402-558-1110, 800-543-1110. we got to take a quick break before we get to the fun stuff. Cyber attacks. Oh, yeah. Stuff like that is happening, potentially. We're going to tell you what happened this weekend. If you haven't heard about the power outage in San Francisco, New York, and Los Angeles, we're going to tell you what happened there. Didn't make a whole lot of evening newscasts. Funny thing. Um, also coming up on the program, your calls. Now, during the commercial break, we're going to be live on Facebook. We're going to do a, a behind the scenes. We'll also do the after the show show, which we still haven't named. Aftershock. I'm liking Aftershock, but the lovely Kimberly doesn't like that name. Um, so, you know, it's kind of hard to get that through the approval, you know, if she doesn't like it. So uh, we're going to – after the program is over on radio, we do stay online on Facebook for five or ten minutes answering your questions live. Uh, so if you have any questions about stuff that we can't talk about on the air or weird little businessy things like locations and stuff like that, feel free to pop on after the show as well. Facebook.com slash Schrock Innovations. More of Compute This coming up next. Schrock Innovations line of modular computers last longer and perform better than those box store one size fits all systems. When it's time to replace your computer, call Schrock at 934-9423 and find out why a modular computer is the last computer you will ever purchase. Funny, okay, so I spent all the time this morning getting the studio computer, making sure the audio was good. And then what ended up happening uh, my IP address at my home computer changed, so I'm trying to remote into my home computer, and it's telling me, can't find your computer, because the box changed my IP address, because I have a residential account at home, not a business account. So I'm on my cell phone here, trying to check and see <laughs> if anybody's got comments on anything. So uh, we're going to go pop it open to Truck Innovations, that's right. And, uh, okay, yeah, those are places. Gotcha, gotcha, places. Schrock Innovations is live right now. Oh, my gosh, it's live right now. How about that? Okay, here we go. Seven comments and one share. So I'm loading the comments now. 16 people actively with their eyeballs on me. Winston. Welcome back, Winston. I missed you last week, man. We had a bad audio problem. I went the whole first half of the show. I didn't know about it because you weren't here with us to tell me about it. Uh, Winston had a vacation or something last week. He's, uh, he's our official sound monitor for Compute This. Uh, yes, this morning is good. Audio is the best ever right now. Thanks, Nan. Woo! All right. Then you on the Ellen Band update. Worked with Robert and Kyle taking care of my mom's computer over the weekend. He patiently took care of everything. Kyle is awesome. He, he is genuinely awesome. All right. I've never opened an iTunes account, but I have the icon. Do I need the updates? All right, Jody, it depends if, if iTunes is installed on your computer. If you double click on that icon and iTunes opens, you should get the updates. Um, if uh, if you double click on it and it's like install iTunes, then it's just something that was placed on there like an ad and you can just delete the icon and it won't be any problem for you at all. Uh, Winston likes the name after Shrock. See, uh, lovely Kimberly, that's two to one. I don't know. She's asleep right now. She was out with her girlfriends last night, I think. And then my, my little Katie bug, my, my four-year-old daughter decided at 6 a.m. that it was wake up time. Sorry, honey, daddy's got to go to work. Woo. All right. Router speed. Elliot says uh, his router died last week. He got a new one from the cable provider, which was defective also. They sent a tech out on Easter to fix the problem. Holy cow. No pun intended. Holy bunnies. Um, I seemed to need a new router every two years. You know, I do too, Elliot. I go through and I, I don't buy the cheap routers. I'm not getting the ones from the cable company. Those are usually garbage. We really, really, really don't like them uh, because they, they lead to problems that we can't predict. Uh, predict. Uh-oh. They're telling me it's time to go. But I'm going to tell you about the Linksys routers that are all uh, having problems here coming up on the show next. Welcome back to the program. You're listening to Compute This. My name is Thor Schrock. I'm the owner of the Schrock Innovations Computer Company. Service centers in Lincoln, Omaha, and Papillion in, the, in Lincoln. The original... <laughs> the original Schrock Innovations in Lincoln, 27th and Pine Lake Road. Also, in Omaha, 168th and Burke, the fastest growing Schrock Innovations location. And then, the baby Schrock. I'm Schrock. Little Guardians of the Galaxy reference for you there. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then, you know, whatever. 
It comes out next week. No, next week? Week after next. Uh, but uh, anyway, it's going to be good. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, 72nd and Highway 370. But right now, 402-558-1110, 800-543-1110. Those are the numbers that you can call to uh, get your question answered, get on the air here. You can ask a question, make a comment. We will put you in the drawing for a Schrock Innovations $25 gift certificate. All you have to do is give us a call and be a part of the program. All right, so we got some stuff to cover. Numero uno, there is something weird. Now, this is, this is a, maybe this is alt news. I don't know. Something's not right. I don't know if you heard about this, but it was a big story in the, in the national news online anyway um, that San Francisco had a massive power outage on Friday. They, uh, they lost power for like hours, like four hours or something. It was ridiculous. No traffic lights. Traffic at a standstill. Um, first responders were responding. There was like 100 calls in the first like few minutes. People stuck in elevators. Like elevators just stopped. Nobody got hurt, thank goodness. But the power was out. And there was reports of a fire in a substation, but no official report ever came out of what the cause of the power outage was. Now, imagine OPPD doing something like that. The entire 90,000 people were out of power. So half the city of Omaha, let's say, is out of power. And OPPD acknowledges, yes, there is a power outage, but we're not sure what happened, but we're fixing it right now. Well, if you don't know what happened, how can you fix it? Would you? Well, there's a fire in the substation. Okay, so then... How do you not know what happened if you know there's a fire in the substation? The fire in the substation knocked out the power. What is there not to know? Hmm. That's just, I was reading the story, and I'm like, it could just be bad reporting, right? It could just be a, a, a stupid reporter writing really fast to get the scoop because the Internet Google, as far as news, rewards first movers. Whoever publishes or posts first gets more links. So you get more traffic, which means more eyeballs on your ads, which means you make more money. So there you go. But then all of a sudden... Within the same hour, a section of New York reported a power outage. And then, within the same hour, a section of Los Angeles reported a power outage. Now, it is entirely possible that all three cities experienced near simultaneous power outages. Completely possible. Weird stuff happens. Do you know there's a CME this week, a coronal mass ejection that's going to hit the Earth this week? Could screw with the satellites and everything and, uh, and cause, you know, um, everything from... You know, bad military communication, which was really important right now, right around Korea. You know, <laughs> gee whiz, there's a coronal mass ejection this week that's going to screw up and scramble satellite communications. That's not good, especially if little Kim decides to, to test his nuclear capabilities, right? Um, on the other hand, it, it could have just been coincidence. But on the other hand, it could have been a cyber attack. And I have no information that, that says, yes, this was a cyber attack. I have no inside source that the government telling me this was a cyber attack. If it was a cyber attack, you would never know. They would never tell you um, because you don't want to confirm for the enemy. The enemy knows it worked, but you never want to give them confirmation on the ground that it worked. So there was a fire in a substation in San Francisco. Was the fire caused by malfunctioning computers that routed too much power to a device and literally incinerated it? And then that knocked out the power? So was a cyber attack the cause of the fire that was designed and intended to knock out the substation? Or was there just a fire that happened for some reason that knocked out the substation? Why did New York go down? No explanation. Why did Los Angeles go down? No explanation. No fires even reported there. What happened? So I'm just saying, with everything going on in the world right now, it's well known that that America's enemies have mapped our power grid. It's well known that our power grid is incredibly open to attack. It's incredibly vulnerable. Everything from a coronal mass ejection all the way down to a cyber attack. So we know we're vulnerable. We know we can be hacked. There's some people, some security experts actually believe there's malware and viruses installed in the grid right now, literally just waiting for the signal to grid down. So, you know, make sure you got a couple gallons of water around the house. Make sure, you know, because how many of those people in San Francisco were on their way to the grocery store because Doritos sounded really, really good. And they didn't think ahead. They didn't have any Doritos in the pantry, but they really wanted Doritos. So they were in their car on the way to the store to get Doritos. It was going to be like a 10 minute trip. And then the traffic lights went out and like four hours later they got home and they didn't even get their Doritos. And they're really hungry now. You know, what do desperate people do when they don't have Doritos? I'm just saying, you're, you're, you're like nine chips to chaos, right? So, uh, so I'm just saying, 
have a, the, the, the Department of Homeland Security recommends you have 72 hours of food and water in your house at all times. And yes, the water in the tank on your toilet bowl is potable. Yes. This brought to you by the nuclear fallout. So anyway, and, you know, that's your conspiracy theory news for the week. Just a heads up. Keep an eye on this kind of stuff. With everything going on right now with Russia involved and China involved and North Korea, asymmetrical warfare is really the only way that North Korea can strike back, aside from, you know, local local artillery and nuclear things in their little neighborhood there. The only way they can really strike back at, directly at the U.S. mainland is asymmetrically. Um, so, you know, watch for that stuff. Uh, also in the news, do you have a Linksys wireless router? Linksys wireless router. If you have a Linksys wireless router, especially one of the newer fast ones, the wireless AC models, you would have spent 100 to 200 bucks on these. Um, your router has no less than 20 security vulnerabilities in it right now that are completely unpatched. I'm telling you about this so you can worry and fret yourself into a ball because there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. That's right. Isn't that awesome? You can't do nothing. Nope. No patches, no workarounds, no nothing. However, I want to take this opportunity to tell you that we all know when you get a new router, you're supposed to change the default password. Most routers do that now as part of the setup process, but you change the default password, okay? When you get any kind of Internet of Things device, you change the default password. But do you know that your router actually has programming inside of it that tells it how to work? And Linksys will periodically update that programming to patch vulnerabilities. So sometime in the next few weeks, Linksys is going to release a firmware update for the router. That's fancy, fancy computer guy language for they're going to give you an update for your router that's not going to automatically install that you have to install yourself. How do you install a firmware update? I'm glad you asked. They don't happen automatically, but usually they make it pretty simple with a button, but you have to log into your router. Do you remember when you first set it up, you had to type in like 192.168.1.1, hit enter, and it brings up the admin password thing. You type in admin, you type in your password, you hit log in, and then boom, you're logged into your router. And then there's a little thing there under settings or advanced or something that's different on every router. Um, but you click on that and you can, you can say update firmware. There's th something in there that says update firmware. You, there is no update right now for it. So don't, you don't have to do it right now. But to keep this in mind, you know, set a calendar reminder for the 15th of next month to double check if you have a Linksys wireless router to see if there's a firmware update. Because this security company uh, discovered this vulnerability back in January. And they told Linksys, we're giving you three months to patch it before we go public. And it didn't get patched, so they went public. Now every bad guy on the planet knows about the vulnerability, and it's putting a ton of pressure on Linksys. Um, so Linksys is now owned by Belkin, by the way. Belkin, the only wireless router that Schrock Innovations will tell you to never buy. I'd rather get punched in the gut than own a Belkin router. I mean, it's that bad. Uh, Belkins are the ones you buy at Walmart for like 40 bucks, And Belkin owns Linksys now. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, make sure you get an update for your Linksys wireless router. 402 558 Coming up on the program, we're going to tell you about the latest online threat called BrickerBot. That's right, BrickerBot, the virus that actually destroys your online goods. Do you have an Internet of Things in your house? A Nest thermostat? Perhaps a router where you haven't changed the default password? Do you have a security camera system in your business? Well, Folks, BrickerBot can brick it for you. That's right. Totally destroyed. We're going to tell you what's happening with BrickerBot coming up here on the program as well. But first, let's go back into those phones. And Gary's been patient with us. Gary, how can I help you today on Compute This? Uh, I'm, oh. I want to upgrade. You, you got me? I've got you. Okay. Uh, I want to upgrade to window from 7 to 10. Okay. Is it, I got one of your uh, little uh, external hard drive things. Yes, sir. And I back it up using Windows, like you said. Okay. And uh, is there any way I can use that back to reinstall all my application software without having to go back in and actually install all of that? I've got good news for you, Gary. Probably, possibly the best news you're going to get all day today. When you okay. uh, When you upgrade from Windows 7 to Windows 10... Unless you have software installed that's completely not compatible with Windows 10, like if you have Office 97, that's not compatible with Windows 10. Um, but your software will all come with it. You won't have to reinstall anything. Oh, I can just leave it be and it'll yeah. go? That's right. Absolutely. Yep. It moves everything over for you, which is really slick. That works upgrading from Windows 7 or Windows 8 or Windows 8.1. That does not work upgrading from Vista, however. 
Vista, there is no upgrade path. It's a clean install. You have to do that from scratch. But Windows 7, if you do the upgrade, and you still can get the upgrade for free from Microsoft. Remember we said it doesn't make sense for them to take this away after a year. Why would they do that? Well, they officially took it away, but they never took it away. Well, <laughs> it's still there. Okay, I'm going to Windows 10 Pro. Okay. So that's not, is it? Well, do you have Windows 7 Pro right now? Well, I, yes, I do. Yeah, well, then you're going to be fine. If you were going from Windows 7 Home to Windows 10 Pro, there is no upgrade path to do that. But as long as you're staying within the same product family, so Home to Home or Pro to Pro, Windows 7 to Windows 10, Windows 8, Windows 8.1 to 10 are going to be just fine. You're going to upgrade. The, and the cool thing is, is if you do the upgrade and then something goes catastrophically awry, now obviously you should always have a backup. Like you said, you got your modular storage device. Do a full backup, image backup before you do the upgrade in case something goes wrong. It doesn't happen a lot, but sometimes things go wrong. Also, just a heads up: if you're going to uh, do a ba if you're going to do a an upgrade like that to your computer, it is always advisable. <laughs> advisable. It's always advisable that you have Drive Advisor. It's advisable to be advised. Um, and Drive Advisor is a free program that we made at Schrock that you can install on your computer, and it's Drive Advisor E R dot com. It's a free program you can put on your computer that will tell you if your hard drive is bad, because if your hard drive Oh, you do? Yeah. Oh, cool. So, how does your how's your drive advisor working for you? I don't know. It, it's seamless. <laughs> it's seamless. All right, I good. It's one hundred percent. It's healthy. Yeah, I got I got to check every now and then to see if it's still working. <laughs> <laughs> Just to make sure, you know, drive advisor will email you when your hard drive goes bad. So yeah, it's, it's it? oh yeah, it'll email it. And then you know we have this thing like okay, so there's new technology that comes in Windows ten. Do you have a laptop, Gary? No. Okay. Well, if you. Yes, I do. You do? Okay, so your laptop has a battery. Do you know that your laptop battery doesn't last forever? They wear down over time. And so there's actually technology built into Windows 8 and Windows 10 that allows you to look at the capacity of your battery, its original capacity, and its current maximum charge capacity. So in other words, how much energy it was designed to hold and how much it can currently hold at maximum. And with those two data points, we can actually create a graph that tells you if your battery is shot. And so we were like, we should build that into Drive Advisor, right? Because it's a stupid, simple test that you can run. If we build it into Drive Advisor, we'll give it away free for everybody. It'd be fine. And then Adam's like, well, wouldn't it be Battery Advisor then? And then, you know, Alfonso's like, so now we have Drive Advisor, we have Secure Updater, we have Battery Advisor. How many programs do we want people to install? And I'm like, I know, guys, I know. I think we're just going to roll it into Drive Advisor and call, and call it an update, and then everybody will have Battery Advisor. Well, what if they don't have a battery? Well, then it won't show up. Come on, Adam. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but no, as long as your hard drive is 100%, if you do that upgrade from 7 to 10, it's going to take all your programs and stuff with you, and everything should be good to go. Well, thank you. That is the best news I've heard in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad I could brighten your morning, Gary. Thanks for calling the program today. All righty, 402-558-1110, That is exactly right there. How you get in the drawing for a $25 Schrock Innovations gift certificate. You see the shine on my forehead? If you're on Facebook.com slash Schrock Innovations, you know, I either need powder. I move the light. There's a light above my head that shines directly. You can see the shadows here. It shines directly down on me. And I pointed it back. You can see it on the wall here behind me, like right here. It's super bright right there. I pointed it back at the wall a little bit because I was looking at the video and I'm like, I look like I have a ghost face. Like it's all like washed out and shiny. And like the other day. See, okay, a little, little secret. If you're watching at facebook.com slash rock innovations, Thor needs these, right? But these don't look good, as you can see, reflections, screens all around me. They don't look good on radio when you're on a camera. They don't look good on TV. So I take them off. Look at that. Now I'm blind, but it's radio. Sweet. So anyway, the uh, 402-558-1110, 800 All right, uh, real quick, we've talked a lot about uh, a, a number of different things on the show. I don't want to beat a dead horse on it here, but we do have a few of the ultimate upgrades left over at Schrock. You can check online at schrockinnovations.com. Uh, you can click on shop there. Go down. If you look at specials, you'll see the ultimate upgrade, both the laptop and the desktop. So whichever one you want as an upgrade, if you have a desktop and you've been thinking it's time to try a laptop, or maybe you, you have a laptop and you want to move to a desktop, you know, either way, or you can stay within the same class, whatever you want to do, it's 449 for either of the computers when you trade in your old computer. So you get to trade in your old, tired, worn out computer. Maybe it's Vista for a nice new modular computer. Um, we have a... Anywhere between 9 and 12 left. I don't have an exact count. When we're out, it'll say out of stock on the website. 
But you can you can check that out at schrockinnovations.com. Also, we're open today from noon to five. I say you can get a brand new modular computer. And it occurs to me that I haven't I haven't told you guys what modular means in a while. And we pick up new listeners every week, especially with Facebook. Now we're getting listeners from all across the country. It's uh it's important to tell people about this. And we will ship computers, by the way, as well. So if you're outside of the uh, the Omaha or Lincoln metro areas and you want to pick up a modular computer, we can ship them to you. Uh, and we provide the same great support that all the it, – it's hilarious. I was thinking about this the other day. But when we got started, we haven't – we've been around for 18 years now. So we haven't had this question in a long time. But when you're starting a computer company, everyone's like, so if I buy a computer from you, how will I know you're, you're going to be here in a year to support me? And it's like, well, how do you know that Dell is going to give you anything for free after you? That Dell won't support you either after a year. After a year, it's what have you done for me lately? You know, <laughs> you haven't bought a computer in a year, man. You're done. Uh, so it's kind of funny. So we've been around for 18 years. When you come to us looking for a computer, we're not going to build you a piece of garbage that has no expandability options, that runs on a laptop power adapter, that has a motherboard in it that would literally fit in a high heel shoebox. Um, you could, they put it on a big box, but they could literally build this computer in a shoebox. We should totally, it'd be a fun project. We should totally build one of these in a shoebox just for fun to show you that I can take an HP desktop and put it all in a shoebox without even putting screws in it. I could just throw them in the box, put the lid on it, hook up a monitor. Maybe I could screw like the monitor thing on the side of the box so it looked really, really funny. You just plug into the side there. Uh, but yeah, there's nothing to them. They're all chip, it's called chip on board. There's no upgradability. Your processor and your memory are soldered directly to the motherboard. It's getting to the point now in laptops, it's hard for us to find laptops that are not all chip on board uh, that actually have upgradability from memory. It's getting hard for us to find ones where we can switch out the hard drive, that the, the solid state is not chip on board. Uh, it's getting hard for us to find laptops that have DVD drives anymore because nobody ha uses DVDs anymore. You don't buy any software on DVD anymore. Unless you're burning your own DVDs, you have absolutely no need for a DVD drive. But it's one of those things that's like the floppy drive. When they got rid of the floppy drive, everybody was all, all ticked off about it. Because how would we ever store anything if we didn't have it on a floppy drive? Then we all had flash drives, now flash drives. Everyone's got one on their keychain or in their car. Bet you have a flash drive in your car right now. But uh, nevertheless, if you're looking for a new computer, modular computers are designed to last longer because they're more upgradable and they're built with com – we don't use the cheapest parts. So you go buy motherboards. You know, we've got one brand of boards that's super-duper cheap. And for, like, for $5 more, we can get the mid-range board. And for $10 more, we can get the high-end board. Well, we're not buying the super cheap motherboard to save 5 bucks. If, I'm, if, if you're HP and you're building you know, millions of computers or hundreds of thousands of computers a year, sure, you're going you're gonna to save that 5 bucks because that's like millions and millions of dollars, right? And you don't want your HP computers lasting forever. It's kind of like a refrigerator. When's the last time you bought a new refrigerator? Some of you are like, well, in fact, I'm on the way home with one in the car right now, Thor. Um, but when is the last time before that you bought a new refrigerator? You know what I mean? If you buy something that lasts, you don't have to repurchase it all the time. Companies that are that their main focus in life is selling hardware, they can't have that. They can't have a computer that, that lasts forever. At Schrock, we're a service company. We are here to make sure that you are happy with your technology. We're here to help you when you have technology problems. We're here to keep your technology safe. That's what we do at Schrock. Now, part of that is selling you hardware because you, you kind of have to do that. You have to have hardware, a hardware channel to provide people. So when we sell you a computer, our computers last longer because we want them to. When we sell extended warranties on our computers, it, it, it's mind-boggling for people because you start talking about the extended warranty and half the people are like, I don't do extended warranties. Stop, 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 stop. stop. No, nope. I don't do it. Wouldn't be prudent. Well, at Schrock, it is really prudent because if you don't use – let's say you buy your extended warranty and then you never use it. At the end of the term, you get a phone call from me that says, hey, this is Thor over at Schrock, and uh, I might owe you money, so give me a call back. And when you call back, we check and we say, hey, look, you didn't use your extended warranty, so we're going to refund that to you. Yes, it's a Schrock gift card. You don't actually get the cash back. It's a gift card. But then what you can do is you can use that gift card to extend your warranty again. And again and again until you do need it. So you're guaranteed that when you have a problem with that computer, you get it fixed for free. We have a 2014 holiday special laptop right now in the Papillion Service Center that's getting a free motherboard replacement. It's the only one, the only holiday special laptop ever that I've ever seen in any of my shops that has just up and died. Don't know what happened to it. It just, nothing. Hit the power button, nothing. 
Well, it needs a new main board. You know how much that main board's costing us? Our cost on the main board is $800. That's how much we are paying out of pocket to get the main board. It was $700 to have Asus fix it or $800 for a new board. If it was me, I'd rather have the new board, so we're getting the new board for this customer. But he didn't have to pay for it because he had an extended warranty that he paid 100 bucks for. I think he's a happy guy today. Now, he's going to have to buy a new warranty next time because we're not going to refund this one. <laughs> you, know, you win some, you lose some, right? But that's the point at Shock. We're here to make your technology experience smooth, and that's what modular computers do. So check it out on our website, schrockinnovations.com. You can learn all about modular computers. You can look at all of our regular computers. If maybe the ultimate upgrade isn't, doesn't have the horsepower you're looking for, we go all the way up the food chain, all the way to 10-core processors. So you can check all that out at schrockinnovations.com or come on in and look at the display models of any of our three service centers. All right, 402-558-1110, 800-543-1110. Michael, I think you're going to be the last call of the show today. How can I help you uncompute this? Um, well, I'm calling you about a non shrock computer, but okay. uh, it's a custom build. Uh, I uh, was having a problem with my uh, clock being accurate, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm talking about a Windows 7 Pro operating system. Okay. So I went. I, I figured it was just battery, so I went and swapped the battery out and uh, reset it, and then I broke out my multimeter to check the battery that I took out. And it was only a 2.9 well, on a 3-volt battery. Gotcha. So uh, I was just wondering if you can go to something else that might be dragging that. Or well, have you changed the batteries out. in your multimeter lately? Well, no, but... <laughs> I don't know. The, the point 0.1 volt variance isn't going to make a big deal of difference for it. Um, it it's going to because the only thing that battery does is it maintains the computer's clock when the power cord is not plugged into the back of the computer. So that that's the only thing. If you if your power cord is removed, that's when the battery kicks in. Um, if the computer is not keeping time, we do see this from time to time. The biggest thing to look for is a BIOS update for your motherboard. Um, you sound like a pretty technical guy, so I won't go into all the details on how to do that because I really don't recommend. It's not something I'd walk somebody through over the radio because if you do it wrong, you're going to brick your computer. Just like BrickerBot will brick your computer. Thanks for the call, Michael. BrickerBot is a new virus that if you have an unsecured Internet of Things device, like remember a month ago or so we had a story about the Internet getting taken down because all those Chinese cameras got that no one changed the default passwords. They all started attacking things. Well, BrickerBot goes out and attacks those devices and bricks them. It breaks them so they don't work anymore. So if your camera system, Nest Thermostat, or other Internet of Things device just suddenly stops working and you don't didn't ever change the default password, you just got bricker botted. All right, thanks for the call there as well, Michael. All right, Linda, congratulations. You are the winner of the $25 Schrock Innovations gift certificate. So, Linda, uh, Kathy will get a hold of you on Monday and get that out to you. And everybody else, stick around for the After Schrock Show on Facebook.com slash Schrock Innovations. We'll be back next Sunday for another edition of Compute This. This is Nebraska's news, weather, and traffic station. This is News Radio 1110, KFAB Omaha. So that's the show. I'm going to bust out the cell phone here so I can take a look at comments. All right. Do -do -do. Opening. Sorry. I, I don't want to leave it open while I'm on the air because then I'll just be looking at it and it's distracting and text messages and stuff come up. So, all right. You watch movies on your DVD. Jody says she watches movies on her DVD. You know, here's the thing. Most people aren't watching movies on their DVD drives anymore. Um, they're, they're downloading them to the hard drives. They're getting Amazon video. They're using iTunes. Um, you know, it's so easy. Like, I, I wanted to start a new series the other day. I wanted to watch uh, Fear the Walking Dead. Because, you know, The Walking Dead, I, I, for the longest time, I put off watching it because I'm like, it's a stupid zombie show. I'm not, I'm not that guy that watches the zombie show. You know, it's like, no, that's not me. So I just decided I'm going to not do that. And, uh, and so basically, the <laughs> when, I, when I went there, I said, okay, I'm going to download Fear of the Walking Dead, which is like an offshoot of The Walking Dead. And I downloaded all the episodes, and I was watching them while I was on the treadmill on my phone. And then when I was done watching it on my phone, I went upstairs, and I said, oh, I'm going to continue watching it on the television now. So it was it, a lot of people aren't doing that anymore with their DVD drives. They're just not. Um, so as a result, if you're not doing it with your DVD drive, you know, you're downloading it. And that's what a lot of people are doing now. So, yeah, I know it, it burns, but... 
Ah, uh, you know. <laughs> All right. So, Thomas, your computer will decide it is now a clump of broccoli. I don't know what that means, Thomas. I, I had some pretty, uh, you know, this week on Facebook, we've had some interesting comments. I had a, a comment about urine from a guy, and I'm like, really? Do I ban this guy? I mean, that that kind of, it's right up to the line. Uh, I don't know. So well, those guys, you just kind of want to ignore them. So I just, we just let that one go, but uh, we'll, we'll keep an eye on him, make sure that that stuff doesn't happen again. All right, so I'm going to set this here. Um, let me see, other stuff, interesting stuff going on at Schrock this week. Um, boy, we, uh, we're we ramping up Secure Updater. Actually, if you're, if you're another computer repair shop and you're watching this right now, um, we started doing calls to other computer repair service centers to tell them about Secure Updater so they can start offering it to their customers. So we're trying to grow Secure Updater out of our local market and, and move it out into the general populace now. So outside of Omaha, Lincoln, Papillion, and everything like that. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. Sorry, I'm getting texts from Gary Saddlemeyer right now, so I've got to kind of look at those because usually he only calls you when you're on the air if there's something wrong, like, hey, this is still on and it shouldn't be. Um, so everything you're saying is going out live on the radio. That would be bad, right, when you think you're not on the radio. Anybody out there ever had a live mic fail? Yeah, I've had that happen before. I'll tell you a funny story about that in a second. But, uh, but basically, the uh, Secure Updater is obviously the program that's designed to uh, you know, keep all of your third-party software up to date. We talked a little bit about it on the show. If you don't have Secure Updater, you should really get it. You can get a free trial at secureupdater.com. It's 14 days free. Uh, you, we don't ask you for a credit card or any jazz like that. You put that right on your computer, good to go. Uh, but it'll get you all those updates that are coming out here, especially with Vista dying. You want to make sure you're getting that. Um, so anyway, you can go ahead and check that out. Um, but other computer repair shops, are, we're offering Secure Updater through other shops too, so that they can sell it to their customers and make money as well. Because it's really hard in the computer repair business. It's getting harder and harder and harder to do stuff, uh, to, to stay in business, because everything is going chip on board. So what can I fix? If your HP breaks, you just got to throw it away. That's the whole point. That's why they're doing it. So to fix the chip on board stuff, we actually had a comment on our on our website, a, a review, and these are just killing us. These these we're getting re one star reviews from people who aren't even customers who have never been in the shop before. But this guy apparently had a problem because he had a broken motherboard, and he called into the service center and he wanted to know if we could fix his motherboard. And we don't fix motherboards. It's not cost effective. You know, I'm going to charge you an hour of labor to solder something on the motherboard for 100 bucks. You can buy a whole new motherboard for like $60. So why would you do that? And so my guys pretty much told him that. And he left us a one-star review because he was like, oh, yeah, these guys are very limited in what they fix. They don't fix motherboards. Nobody fixes motherboards because it's stupid. Dude. Why would you do that? God, my goodness. So anyway, you know, funny, funny story there. Secure updater. And it's getting tough for computer repair shops. To, uh, to stay in business because there's not a lot to do. Hard drives go bad, security software, memory goes bad. And if you put hard drives and memory into the computer, now we're just selling computers. And it's hard to compete with Best Buy and Dell because uh, everyone's looking at price. And it's hard when you're an independent business to compete on price with someone who's making a million units a year. And I'm making like you know 300 or 500 a year. It, it's almost impossible. So uh, Secure Updater is a really cool way for other computer repair shops to find a new service that customers actually need on their existing hardware that they can make some money on and pay their people and keep those jobs in the U.S. You know, that's that's a good thing. So that's going on over there. Russell on Facebook writes, so what is the approximate cost of getting a 500 gig solid state put into a laptop? Great question. Um, we have a price sheet at Schrock on the wall with all the prices. I believe a 500 gig hard drive is about $180. Don't quote me on that. Um, but here's the thing. If you go online to look at the cost of 500 gig hard drives, you're going to find a wide variety of prices, Some sometimes as much as a $90 or $100 price variance. And the reason is there are some really crappy 500 gig hard drives, and then there's the Samsung Evo drives, are the, are the pinnacle best. You don't have to get the pinnacle best because the technology is kind of normed out, but I guarantee you if you get an A data drive, the cheapest one, you're going to regret it. It's going to be bad. So we don't use the super cheap ones at Truck. We use kind of the middle of the road drives. Unless you request the Samsung, then we'll get you the Samsung, but they usually cost about $30 more. Two hours of labor to put it in your computer. That means we're going to clone your old hard drive onto the new hard drive and put it into the computer. So that gives you a little bit of an idea. You're looking at about a $400 job. Everything's said and done for the 500 gig drive. Keep in mind, the average user uses about 80 gigs of their hard drive. So 
do you really need the 500? Really, really think about that. Do you need the 500 or would a 256 work? Because that's half the price, obviously. So it's kind of a cool thing. But I have to tell you, when I moved on, I had a hybrid drive in my computer. If that tells you how old my holiday special is at home, um, I'm starting to get the itch. I'm starting to see these new Ryzen chips coming out. We're building prototype holiday specials already. And oh my goodness, I'm like, so fast. I want a new computer. I don't need a new computer, but I want a new computer. So, uh, so anyway, but once you upgrade to a solid state, you will never go back. And I don't care what kind of technology you have now. Uh, it makes any computer just mind bogglingly faster. All right, Russell. Yeah, all right. So hopefully that answers your, your question there, Russell on Facebook. Uh, but, uh, all right. So funny, funny story. Mary Nelson, uh, was, uh, the host of the morning blend for years and years. And uh, we did a lot. Every Monday at you know about nine forty-five, we go on there. And uh, Mary's been there to do the show with us. And Mary was was she moved on to take a job at QVC. It was really sad. Everybody was sad to see her go. The last show I did with Mary, I was talking on the radio show about how you know now I, I need these. And yeah, you know how long it took to get used to the transitions. They're bifocals. I'm forty. What I need bifocals? What happened to me? You know, I'm getting old, right? Oh no. But uh, everybody out there who's over 40 right now is like, shut up, Thor. And everybody under 40 is like, ah, dude, I thought he was younger. I can't believe I'm listening to such an old person. Ugh. Anyway, so I don't wear these on TV. As you can see, you can see the screen in front of me here. When I look down here, you can see my phone down there. You can see all kinds of stuff all around me. I don't like the reflections, right? So I don't wear them on TV. I don't wear them when I'm on camera on the radio. So I'm sitting down for my morning blend segment. I got my jacket on, my nice shirt and everything. And it's the last show with Mary. And I'm, I, I want to I wanna have fun with it. I want to be good. And so they're playing the intro. They're getting ready. The mics are about to go live. And I realize I have my glasses on. And I say, oh, shh, beep. See, I, I got to be careful. There are microphones around me. I can't, even though I'm online, I got I to be careful. So, oh, shh, beep, you know, and like this. And Mary just goes, because it was that close that my mic literally after after I, I said my mic probably came on and the whole segment I didn't know if that went live on TV for my last show or not I had no idea if I dropped an s-bomb live on channel three and so the whole segment that's all I could think about it was like oh uh, what am I here to talk about oh I, I said a bad word oh it's so embarrassing and then as soon as they put the video online I'm like queuing it up like Oh, either they edited it out, which I don't think they did, or it did, or I, I just beat the buzzer by a hair. So it's a funny story there from uh, from Channel Three. But by the way, you can watch. I'll be on uh, 9:45. Uh, we're gonna we have a lot to talk about. We're gonna talk about uh, the Brickerbot virus uh, tomorrow. Um, so if you want to learn a little bit more about that, we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna spew more conspiracy theories about grid attacks. It's good to raise awareness about it because it is a problem. They can happen someday. It will happen if it hasn't already. Um, but uh, but it's one of those things, guys. Make sure you got 72 hours of food and water in your house. Just trust me on this one. Um, it's important. You don't have to think about it once you have it. Get a couple, two or three gallons of water. I mean, it's not enough, but get two or three gallons of water. You know, you can go to the grocery store, they're like 98 cents for the high V purified water. You know, if nothing else, you can drink it, okay? <laughs> you can drink it in your water bottle. It's the same stuff you get in the Aquafina bottles. It's just, it's cheap. Have a little bit of that around. Have some mac and cheese on the shelf and a bag of Doritos. Doritos are important. All right. So I'm not getting any more questions. This is your last chance to post a question before I drop out and head home. I got to get Panera and breakfast for everybody and get on the road here. So uh, if you got another question, go ahead and and, uh, and post it. Otherwise, in three, two, one. All right, no more questions. All right, thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate you joining me on the show today. We'll be back again next Sunday for another edition. Also, I do a show in Lincoln on uh, Saturdays. It's a completely different show than this one. We have a co-host who like keeps me on subject and keeps me from going on tangents about things. Um, but it's on uh, 1240 AM KFOR. I do post about it before we go on the air on Facebook, but you can listen to it at KFORnow.com. Their stream isn't the most reliable, but you can usually pick it up. Uh, otherwise, if you're in your car, you can usually get it, especially if you're in Lincoln. You can get it. Uh, but it's a completely different show, similar topics. We're going to like, we hit the Bricker Bot story. We're going to hit the same stories, but it's kind of from a different angle. It's kind of weird because there's a co-host. It's a totally different show. So if you can't get enough on Sundays, you can always check that out on Saturdays. Also, Monday, we'll be on with uh, Kayla, who is filling in for Mary right now while they're trying to hire over there. So if you have always wanted to be an amazing TV star, I know they're, they're looking for women. So guys, you know, they have one guy send in a video 
and he was literally was he was doing fitness videos before this and he his his like demo tape he's coming up out of the ocean like baywatch style pecs are just bouncing yeah you know and they're like oh my gosh and you know mike jock was like no we can't have two dudes it's not gonna work <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so I think he was just jealous of the pecs myself. But uh, anyway, if you are an aspiring, uh, or they're looking for experience. But if you're an ex aspiring, experienced TV person and you're looking for a job in the Omaha Metro and TV, they are hiring right now. You might want to uh, get a hold of Kayla Thomas over at the uh, the Omaha Morning Blend and uh, find out if uh, that's something you want to do. Kayla's going to appreciate this. She's going to get a. She's like, so that's how they're getting in. <laughs> Yeah, you know, all these resumes are coming in. That's how they're coming in. Oh my gosh, Thor, what are you sending me? So yeah, there you go. Just helping you out, Kayla. Love you. Hashtag Kayla love. All right, have a good one, guys. We'll talk to you soon.